Hey there, teachers and students. My name is Benjamin, and this is my series covering the Texas Math 7 through 12 exam. This section is going to be part five covering competency two, which requires the teacher to understand comp the complex number system. All right, so this video is gonna be called Powers of Complex Numbers. And one of the great things about complex numbers is, well, when they're written in polar form, they're really easy to simplify when you raise them to a exponent. So what I mean is, let's say that we have some complex number Z in polar form, and I'm talking about the CIS form that you're probably used to hearing if you took, if you took complex numbers in college. Z is equal to R cosine theta plus I sine theta. Now, if we want to take that complex number Z and raise it to some power n, all we have to do is raise that R factor to the power of n and multiply our, int our angles in our uh, trig functions here by that n. So you can see it right there. Um, this is called De Moivre's theorem. And it's so simple, in fact, that if you're given a problem that says to you know, simplify raising to a certain power and it's in rectangular form, the easiest way to do it is going to be to convert it to polar form and then go ahead and use De Moivre's theorem to simplify it and convert it back to rectangular form. Sometimes they'll tell you to leave it in polar form, but sometimes you'll have to actually convert it back to rectangular form, and we'll see what that looks like here in a minute. Now, let's go ahead and get started with a simple example, though, one where it actually just gives it to you in polar form and it wants you to simplify it in polar form. We have this complex number 3 CIS with a 40 degree angle, and we're going to want to simplify this if after raising it to the power of 6. Now, following De Moivre's theorem, all we have to do is raise 3 to the power of 6. Oops, let me get my pen. 3 to the power of 6. And then I'm going to write CIS with 40 times 6. So cosine um, 40 times 6. 4 times 6 is 24, so 40 times 6 should be 240. 240 degrees plus I sine 240 degrees. Don't forget my parentheses there. And there you have it. That's pretty much done. I mean, you don't really have to raise 3 to the power of 6, but if you do happen to have a calculator handy, you go ahead and pop it in, and you should get 729. So if you want to take this one step further, 729. I think it's better to put brackets here instead of what I put on this first example. Cosine 240 degrees plus I sine 240 degrees and it doesn't say it on this example, and we're not going to do it for this one. But if you wanted to convert this to rectangular form, all you have to do is distribute that 729 and then just plug in um, cosine 240 and sine 240. Um, what you'll get is your A and your B for your rectangular form in the form um, A plus BI. This would be the rectangular form. And all you have to do now is just plug this into the, fully into the calculator and you'll get it, um, leaving the I as a factor. Now. Let's go ahead and go to the little bit more drawn out problem, the situation where you're given the problem in rectangular form and you have to convert it to polar form because there's quite a few more steps there. It's not difficult, but it is definitely still easier than trying to simplify this by leaving it in rectangular form. And so the way that you're going to do this is you're going to want to kind of, you know, you might be really good at visualizing without having to uh, graph this, but I personally am going to want to plot this rectangular form complex number on a rectangular coordinate grid. So what we have here is we have the real axis, which is the horizontal, and we have the imaginary axis, which is the vertical. And we're going to go ahead and plot this number as if it was the ordered pair 3, comma, negative 2. All right, because the real portion of this number is 3. The imaginary portion of this number is negative 2. And so if I'm going to plot that on the graph, it's actually going to go about right here. 3 on the x-axis, negative 2 on the y-axis. And the way that we actually convert this to polar form is we need to get the r, the radius of this, the radius here, and that's going to be the distance from the origin. And since we have, you know, this rectangular graph here, it's pretty easy because we just need the distance formula. So the distance formula here is just going to be, well, we have 3 and we have 2 right here. So let's say um, r is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. That's going to be equal to 9 plus 4 which is equal to the square root of 13, that's going to be our r. All right, so if we're looking for polar form, which just as a reminder, polar form is going to be z is equal to r, and then cis with whatever uh, angle theta, cosine theta plus i sine theta. The way that you get that theta, well, that theta is going to be this angle theta right here. All right, and uh, we don't want to deal with this radical, so we want to just deal with these two legs. And because this is a right triangle, we can go ahead and use a little bit of right triangle uh, trigonometry in Sokotoa. 
going to write that on the screen for you guys to reference. So Katoa, we don't want to use the hypotenuse, so we're going to stick to tangent because then we can just use the legs. And what TOA stands for in Sokotoa is it's telling you, it's a reminder that tangent theta, the theta we're dealing with here, is going to be equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. And in this case, that's actually, um, well, this is negative 2, so negative 2 over negative 2 over 3. So that said, what we can do in order to find theta is we can take the inverse tangent of negative 2 over 3. And that should equal theta. All right, so you're going to want a calculator before you pop this in. But what you will get in a calculator is ultimately you'd probably get negative 36, about negative 36 when you plug this into the calculator. We don't want the negative. We want to go uh, counterclockwise on the, on, the pull, on the graph starting from our positive x-axis. So that's going to take us, if you subtract that 36 from 360, you should actually get something more like 326, 326 degrees. So we're going to say that theta is equal to 326 degrees. And that's what we're going to use as our angle theta in polar form. So z is equal to the square root of 13 times cosine, what did we say, 326. Cosine 326, let's use square brackets here, 326 degrees plus i sine 326 degrees close it off with square brackets so that is um, our number 3 minus 2i in polar form so let's go ahead and now raise this to the power of 6 that is going to be the square root of 13 but I'm gonna write this a little bit differently because the square root of 13 to the power of 6 should more easily be written as 13 to the power of 1 half and then to the power of 6 because um, when you have something that you're taking the square root of, that's the same thing as raising it to the one-half power. And it's better to write it to the power of one-half because when you have a number that has an exponent raised to another exponent, the way that you simplify that is you actually multiply the two exponents together. So in this case, what we're going to be left with is actually 13 to the power of 3 because one-half times 6 is equal to 3. So if we continue to simplify this, we're going to have cosine... And then we're going to take that 326 and we're going to multiply it by 6. And that's going to give us, let's pop this into the calculator really quick. 326. It's going to give us 1956. So 1,956 degrees, which um, if you follow that around the unit circle enough times um, and you want to end off with a remainder that is less than 360, that's going to leave you ending off with 158 degrees. Okay, 158 degrees. And then plus I sine 158 degrees. And there you have it. If you want to raise 13 to the third power, that's actually just going to be 2197. And we'll have to do that for the next step. Um, so let me go ahead and write this out. One fifty-eight. All right, so I'd say that this is probably the most simple polar form for this rectangular complex number. Now, here's the thing: you might have a situation where it asks you to give the simplest form um, in rectangular form. So at this point, it's really not that difficult. That's probably the easier part of this of this problem. All you're going to want to do is you're going to just want to calculate cosine 158 and sine 158 and then distribute your 2197. So it's, it's really no big deal there. Um, if you want to go ahead and plug that all into a calculator, what you're going to end up getting after you calculate cosine 158 and multiply by 2197, you're going to get negative, a negative number here, 2035 plus um, the sine of 158 times 2197 will give you 828i. And this is going to be your simplified uh, form in rectangular form. Now, that's all we have for this topic. If you have any questions or need further practice, don't hesitate to get in touch with me via the email address listed below. Also, smash the like button if you don't mind. But more importantly, share this resource with other teachers who might need it. I'll see you in the next one.